Hi, Sam Roberts here for Roberts Geospatial and ProRaster Scientific. Um, today, I'm just going to show you how to use the JEBCO 2023 bathymetry grid. So uh, here's the JEBCO website, and you can go to the gridded bathymetry data section uh, and download their, um, their bathymetry grid for the whole world. Um, so they update this every year. And the latest one was in, I think it's April 2023. So we're coming at it a bit late, but you can download it in various different formats, NetCDF, GeoTIFF, um, Esri, ASCII raster. So I downloaded the files in GeoTIFF format and, um, and let's open them up in ProRaster. Um, so let me bring up the file explorer. Uh, so here's our files. We have, um, what, eight GeoTIFF files. So we want to um, create a raster source for these in ProRaster. So let's go into the raster source editor um, and we'll add a new raster source. Jebco Bathymetry 2023. And then I can just drag and drop these TIFF files onto the raster source editor. Um, now these TIFF files are not, not cloud optimized GeoTIFF, so we do need to create overview pyramids for them. So we can come into the prepare button here. You can favor speed or quality. In this case, um, it doesn't really matter. There's, there's no issue about quality, so we'll just hit prepare. And what that's going to do is create overview pyramids, which are these PPRC files which appear. Um, it's also going to create um, statistics or compute statistics for each of these rasters and that gets stored in the STTX file that appears uh, and it's also going to um, mirror that in a GHX file. ProRaster doesn't use the GHX file but if you load the raster into MapInfo then it will use that GHX, GHX file. Um, <clears throat> So we'll just wait for that to complete. So uh, that's all done now. So we can close that, hit OK. And, um, and it automatically opens that raster source into a new algorithm for us. So you can see that uh, it's being rendered. It looks a bit funny because uh, each of the eight tiles are being rendered with its own color transformation. So you can see some different color changes. So let's go in and fix that. So um, come into our data transform type and we'll use one of our system color maps. Um, I'll choose Atlas, which is shipped with ProRaster. And um, and you also have to select it here in the lookup table uh, list, but that gets uh, automatically done for you. And you can see that it's now displayed correctly. So we can open that over here and zoom in. Um, so, so now that's uh, we're looking at the TIFF files. Uh, so what else can we do? Well, um, let's go to the processing menu. Let's join these TIFF files into a virtual raster. So I'll select the raster source, which is the one that I just created. So we've got our eight TIFF files now, and that's going to be joined into, so let's go to, um, let's see, Jebco 23, and we'll call it um, Jebco2023.mvr. Save that, hit OK, and now we have you can see that those color variations have disappeared because we've now got a single raster. This is a virtual raster. Um, so that's a little bit uh, easier to work with than, the, than just the um, raster source. Um, we can now export that. So let's go export operation. Um, we'll choose the, um, the raster that we just created, the virtual raster, and we'll output output that to an MRR, so that's fine. Um, hit OK. <clears throat> and it will now do
do the conversion to MRR. So what it's doing now is it's copying uh, all of the base resolution data out of those eight TIFF files uh, into our MRR file. Um, it's then going to compute statistics for the whole data set. That gets saved into the MRR file. Um, and then it's going to compute overviews and all of that gets saved into the MRR file as well. So at the end of the day, you don't have all these uh, additional files. You just have a single file, your MRR raster, and you'll be able to display that in ProRaster. Anyway, I've done that previously, so let's, let's not go through with that. Close that. Um, so let's get rid of all these and go to the raster that I created earlier under here is our MRR raster. Okay, so we'll go to the color component um, we'll just change to my uh, Atlas color table. Okay, external window, bring that up there. Okay, so let's have a, a quick look. Um, maybe just zoom in a bit. So uh, every year they remake these things um, and, um, and it all changes. Some years it seems to get worse, some years it gets better. My view on this one, for what it's worth, is that uh, it is better. Um, just looking around the coastline of Australia, um, the detail seems to be better. Um, the, the quality of the data seems to be better. Um, so I think on that basis, I'm going to recommend this 2023 data set over the previous 2022, 2021, etc. Um, this certainly does seem to be the best. Um, so let's go in and adjust the sea level. I just want to show you one little thing uh, as an aside. So here's the, the Kimberley up here and, um, and, and out here on the continental shelf, um, if we adjust the sea level, we'll see um, an interesting area which has been subject of a recent paper. So I'm going to go to the color component and I'm going to do some data conditioning. So I open up the data conditioning editor and I've created one called here sea level modifier. And down here I've ticked on transform. So the transformation is um, the output value is the scaling times by the input value plus some transformation. So my scaling is going to be one. In other words, that does nothing. And then I'm going to add 91 meters to the DEM values to simulate a sea level drop of 91 meters. That takes us back to um, the end of the last ice age. So let's just select that in our data conditioning and update. And you can see that um, all of this area, which used to be ocean or is currently ocean, has now turned into land. And, um, and we have an inland sea here. We have a, a lake here and there's an archipelago of uh, islands out here. And um, i just bring up uh, edge. So if you go to the conversation, there's uh, an article uh, which mirrors a paper that was recently published about this area where they've done pretty much the same thing. And, um, and if we zoom down a bit, you can see here, this is called the, the Melita Sea. Um, and uh, oh, there's another picture which I don't have now, but they name some of these other features. This, uh, let me get rid of that, this, this canyon that comes through here. Uh, and this canyon that comes through here, and they identify this lake, uh, which is in here. Um, you can see there's some little patches of high resolution data. Maybe the researchers have got access to more high resolution data in this area, I don't know. But I can imagine that um, 20,000 years ago, uh, this would have been a very, um, you know, rich area for a hunter-gatherer Aboriginal society um, lots of uh, food resources and um, and I imagine that if you dredged any of, any of these areas around this lake you'd probably turn up uh, endless numbers of uh, um, you know stone tools and and um, 
and uh, arrowheads and so forth, um, just like you, you do if you go down to um, the, the fossilised lake shore at, Mount, at Mungo, for example. You, you know, they're just stone tools just coming out of the sand on that lake shore. Anyway, so that's how to use Jebco 2023 in ProRaster Scientific. Thanks for watching.